is like one of those videos where they cut the basketball and it's cake or something. That was very confusing. This is SportsCenter. Hey, I'm Julia Tashiri, once again filling in for Roberto, who's on the go, and the moment Elks fans have been waiting for, kind of, happened last night. As Edmonton ended its 13-game losing streak dating back to last season, with a win in Hamilton. Trey Ford got the start at QB again, and it's pretty cool that the first win of his career came last season at the Donut Box, and that he was able to end the Elks losing streak in the hammer as well. The last QB to win a game for Edmonton before last night was Taylor Cornelius, who started 10 games this season and didn't win a single one. So now that the Elks have won a game, everyone's attention shifts to whether or not they're gonna win a home game. They've got four remaining chances on home turf to do it this season, starting with next week's game against Ottawa. Remember, they still haven't won a home game since changing their team name to the Elks. The Red Blacks and Stampeders have a combined record of 6-12 this season, and they're a combined 3-7 on the road. With the momentum the Elks have right now, these next two home games might finally be their best chance at ending that terrible skid. And Week 11 in the CFL continues with Friday Night Football, when the Stamps host the Bombers. Winnipeg can become the first team to win eight games this season, and coverage begins tonight at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific, only on TSN. We're just one sleep away from the final weekend of action, at the FIFA Women's World Cup. And here now to get us all set for a pair of massive games, all the way from Sydney, Australia, it's friend of the show, Lindsay Hamilton. Thanks so much for hopping on with us, Linz. Hey, Julia, or should I say, good day from down under. The Aussie accent still needs some work, but I thought I would show you a few iconic Australian locations before Sunday's final, including Bondi Beach and the Sydney Opera House. Isn't it beautiful at night? Okay, that is amazing, and now that you've given me the biggest case of travel FOMO ever, tell me about the footy. Let's start with the third place match between Sweden and co-host Australia. Do you think the Matildas can overcome the disappointment of Wednesday morning and end their tournament on a high note? Julia, the support around the Matildas in Australia is incredible. And I think the team really feels that. There are waltzy Matilda signs in every shop. You can't walk a single block without seeing World Cup signage. And even though Australia lost to England in the semifinal, thousands of Australian supporters stayed in their seats after the match to show the team support. And the team knows what their performance at this tournament is doing for soccer in this country. So I think they're going to use that momentum and end the tournament on a high note. And now for the all-important final. Both Spain and England in search of their first ever Women's World Cup titles. We're putting you on the spot. Who do you think is hoisting the trophy? and why. I think it's so exciting that we're going to see a new champion crowned at a Women's World Cup with both Spain and England reaching the final for the first time ever. I think Spain has been on a terrific run despite the turmoil with their federation reaching the final in just their third appearance at a Women's World Cup. But I have to give the edge to England. They won the Euros last summer. I saw them defeat Australia in the semi-final and I think the team's depth and their physical style of play is going to be the difference maker. So with that being said, I'm going England to win the final. Thanks, Lindsay. Congratulations on being the only person with more air miles this summer than Marissa. Time now for my favorite segment and yours, Why We Love Sports Today. Why We Love Sports Today. So as you might have seen yesterday, Connor McDavid laced him up for his Wednesday night men's league game in Newmarket. I can confirm that my boyfriend, everybody else in that game, is going to be telling that story for the rest of their lives. Well, those beer league beauties got the taste of playing with a legend on that fateful night in Newmarket. It got us thinking about the moment that guys like Connor will look back on, as the moment they realized that they were in the show. So here's our buddy Brendan, getting those answers from guys in the NHL right now. What was your welcome to the NHL moment? Uh, I'd probably say getting hit by Ryan Reeves in the corner. I think honestly my first game playing in Pit or playing against Pitt Pittsburgh and Chicago, um, you know, just playing against like Malkin and Crosby and, um, you know, trying to stay off the ice against those guys. So, um, yeah, I think that was a, a pretty cool moment. I'd say probably first game. Um, I lucky enough we started, so I think just, yeah, standing on the blue line and looking at a, a sold out crowd in Nashville was pretty. Yeah. Pretty scary, pretty nervous, yeah. but I think that was that was probably the moment that sticks out to me. My first game against Dal or I was playing for Dallas. We were in an in Anaheim, and uh, Getzlav was in the corner. Did a no look pass to the middle of the slot to Solani, and he buried it before I could even leave my post. And I was like, nice. I'm not sure if a goalie one would be worse or getting hit by Ryan Reeves. I think I'd take getting scored on, personally. <laughs> After a tough stretch of 19 games in 20 days, including 17 straight to start it, the hockey person in me thinks 17 is insane. 
just saying on the side. The Blue Jays had a day off yesterday as they prepare to kick off a crucial three game set tonight versus Cincy. And it's not just critical to Toronto's playoff hopes. Check out the logjam that Cincy finds himself in. Just two games back of the division leading Brewers and tied with three teams for the final wildcard spot. Six teams are separated by less than five games in the NL wildcard race. Meanwhile, Toronto has lost four of its last six and are clinging to just a half game lead over surging Seattle for the final AL wildcard spot. After sweeping the Jays in the wildcard series last year, the Mariners are proving to be a thorn in Toronto's side again. They've won three straight and 16 of their last 21. All this after entering the All-Star break, just a game over 500. And one of the biggest reasons for their resurgence is their 22-year-old superstar, Julio Rodriguez. In their four-game series with the Royals, J-Rod racked up 12 hits and 11 RBIs. He followed up a four-hit night on Wednesday with a career-best five-hit night yesterday, which he capped off with a go-ahead three-run homer in the eighth. In fact, the nine hits he tallied over his last two games are as many as the entire Jays team had in their two-game series with the Phillies. Now, before the calendar flipped to August, J-Rod had been pretty underwhelming this season, in a very similar way that Jays fans have felt about Vladdy Jr.'s season. Vladdy's overall numbers don't look that impressive, especially in comparison to Boba Shets, who is, by the way, expected to return to action on Saturday after a successful rehab stint in Buffalo. However, we shouldn't overlook the fact that Vladdy usually hits behind Bichette and provides protection for him. While Vladdy hasn't had that kind of protection, since Toronto traded away the big bats of Teoscar Hernandez and Lourdes Gurriel Jr. in the offseason. And if you look deeper into Vladdy's numbers, you might be surprised to note he's actually been extremely productive when it matters the most, while the majority of the team has struggled in those same situations. Whether it's with runners in scoring position, the bases loaded, high leverage situations, late in close games, Vladdy has delivered. So his numbers without men on base have not been great, but that could have more to do with pitchers not giving him much to hit, knowing the lineup is not as deep as it has been in previous years. However, when they have to pitch to him, he's been dangerous. All right, that was a lot of numbers, and sometimes we need a little bit more context, you know? That's all for today. Marissa will be back tomorrow with all the highlights from the third place game at the Women's World Cup. From Sasky.